Hello and welcome to the Cuyamonga Institute, our Q&A Conversation for Exploration series. I'm Paul Robert, the Executive Director and President of the Institute, and along with my wife, Laura Lee, the Director of Research, Education, and Outreach. And on behalf of our Board of Directors, Advisors, Volunteers, and Supporting Members, we want to thank you for joining us today. The Cuyamonga Institute's a nonprofit research organization committed to researching consciousness and the human experience following the footsteps of our founder, anthropologist Dr. Felicitas Goodman. And as an educational institution, we take an open approach. We invite scholars in related fields to help broaden the scope of our own work and exploration. That's why we call this Conversation for Exploration. On these weekly Sunday discussions, we've included a full spectrum of topics from neuroscience, anthropology, art history, art history um, archaeology, mythology, archaeoastronomy, and much, much more. So we invite you to visit our website at queermongainstitute.com. All of our presentations are free, and as a nonprofit, of course, we invite you to become a supporting member. And we want to thank you, the community members, who continue to support the mission of the Queermonga Institute. Today, we continue that journey into the world of rhythm and sound. We experience that power of sound by using a steady progressive sound in the ritual and posture work of the Institute. And traditional cultures around the world have used drumming, rattling, tapping of sticks, rhythmic chanting to draw us into some sort of an altered state, a trance state. There's a physiological impact, specifically on the brain. Research finds playing dra uh, drums regularly enhances the brain structure and function increasing the fibers that connect the tissues between the hemispheres and organizes the motor brain areas more efficiently. And we know just listening to music can reduce anxiety, blood pressure, uh, pain, it improves sleep, mood, mental alertness, and, and memory. And today, today we want to specifically look at the impact and language of the frame drum. Now this history goes way back. And we find primary uh, drummers were women if you look at ancient Mediterranean world from Turkey, Egypt, uh, Greece, Rome, the goddess and the frame drum were <clears throat> core to the mystical religious traditions. And how about from Africa, the djembe drum, or the tabla of India, to the Neolithic cultures of Asia. And indigenous cultures and First Nation peoples worldwide use drumming in prayer and ritual, ceremony, personal wellness, healing, and music. The drum is more than a musical instrument. It's a living spirit that calls us back to the origins and our relationship to creation. It shouldn't surprise us that women were right there. Um, I think Lane Redman wrote when the drummers were women. Right. This has been a long story. It's there in the archaeological record, right? And as you say, we're hardwired for music. We picked up, we could make drums so early on in other instruments. You find flutes that are so, so old. Mm. I think the drums were there as well early, early, early on because uh, they would have decayed away. We wouldn't have seen them. But we do see stalagmites in caves. We can mm. see the wear on them and the toning of them. You and I were in the Tulum Cave in Mexico where it's a well-known uh, musical feature. Yeah. We were in the caves of France and we were told there were xylophones, a series of um, stones that were toned that were of different lengths that would make those scale, series so. of tones to be a mm -hmm. scale. Mm -hmm. So music is such an early, early part of us. And we are so pleased to invite our good friend Jane Elworthy here with us today. We've had many adventures with Jane in Australia, in Washington State, and at the Cuyamonga Institute. She is here to give us an illustrated talk on this long, long history of the frame drum and women. And uh, she, um, thank you. Uh, she's got a long, long history as a drum maker and a drummer, teacher, performer, began in 1992, she says, when teaching theater in Santa Fe. She's also worked with the uh, drummer Glenn Velez, and today she facilitates retreats in the U.S., France, the Australian Outback. She's based in Sydney and Broken Hill uh, in New South Wales, Australia, where, she's, uh, where it's very late and she's stayed up into the night. To it's be very with us early today. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hello, Jane. Welcome, Jane. Good to see you. Hello. So beautiful to see you. And hello, everybody. And uh, it's wonderful to be here. And yes, I did stay up. It's quarter to two in the morning. 
the morning here and uh, but it's absolutely worth it and what a blessing so thanks for the opportunity to to uh, to talk about my passion which is uh, the frame drum we knew you were a kindred soul the moment we met you and yeah. indeed um, you and Paul have collaborated on a number of uh, music flute piano yeah. uh, spontaneous compositions yeah. so yeah it's been fun it's good to hear more about your drumming uh, history your yeah. drumming expertise tell us how the journey began more details on that journey okay well, it began for me very early when I was, uh, I'll give you the abridged version because it is quite long. When I was 13, I was walking home from, the, from, from school, going to the bus stop, coming home from high school, and I used to pass a music store every day. And in the window was a simple round drum, just like one of these, open backed like this. And I had my eye on it for ages. And eventually I plucked up the courage and I went into the store and I lay by it. I don't know if you have lay by in, in America, but you know, it's where you pay it off bit, bit by bit. Nobody does it anymore. But back then, this is a long time ago. And uh, I, every week I'd pay $2 off this little drum. And I eventually got it and took it home on the bus and I sat on our old green couch and I remember it was late afternoon and I, I, I don't know why I was called to this drum. I had no experience with music or with, with drumming at all. And I held it up to the light and I, the, sun, the late afternoon sun came through the skin and I saw all the veins of the skin and I realised that I was in the presence of a living animal. And then I smelt this skin and I was overcome with, well, I guess I had my first shamanic experience and I had a voice actually that said to me in that moment, not in these exact words, it's something as you know, sort of more conveyed than actual words. But when you grow up, because I was, I was 13 at this stage, these are the textures and smells and sounds that, that you'll be working with. And it was quite a profound experience and it was a very healing experience for me because the year before had been a deep initiation down into the uh, underworld for me and that's another story but there was something about this drum that, that brought me back uh, up to the surface as a, as a young woman and then of course I completely forgot about that voice and look I ended up I think I sold that drum you know but I I sold it to go to England to, towards funding me going to England when I was 19. But when I was back in Australia in my early 20s, I was working in the corporate world and I'd been to Sri Lanka on a holiday and I, I forgot all about that as a child and I bought another one of these drums again, just like this, but a bit bigger. And I we were having a party at my place and someone uh, put a fork they were playing this drum with a fork and went straight through the skin. And a friend said to me, I know how to skin a, a drum. And he took me to his studio. We soaked this animal skin in water. And when we lifted it, when I lifted it out of the water, I was washed over again with the smell that I had when I was 13. And I had a, an absolute sort of full body remembrance of the voice that said that this was this would be the textures and smells that I would would work with and at that stage I was working in the corporate world and I ended up it was such a profound remembrance for me that I ended up um, quitting my job and hiring a studio and taking up drum making um, and I had no so I was a drum maker before I was a player and uh, I had no no teacher or anything and I skinned garbage bins and old sewer pipes and anything to uh, just experience this calling that I'd had to become uh, a drum maker and uh, eventually I realized that I needed a teacher and found a teacher in um, in Santa Fe New Mexico and that's what that's what got me in 1992 over to um, over to New Mexico where I was teaching theater and uh, ended up on a whole, a whole journey of learning to make African drums and different sorts of frame drums. And that's where I met Glenn Velez and, 
and saw him playing this little instrument. Um, some of them are this large, we'll see images, and some of them are this big, tiny little things. And here was a man standing up on the stage, just playing a whole world of sound through this little, these little instruments. And something in me knew that this was something I'd done for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. I just had one of those body recognitions. And, um, and I, so I found him after the performance backstage and, you know, kind of was like, will you teach me what is this thing? And he eventually agreed. And uh, so I ended up studying, not for a long period of time, but went on later um, with my own study and with other teachers. But pretty well it was a self-taught instrument because it was already in me. Uh, it was as though I just, it just had to be activated and, and brought back to life in me. And so that's been, um, gee, what's that, 30-something 30, 30 years ago. And, uh, yeah, and, and then I began to research the history of the frame drum. I knew somewhere in myself that this was a women's instrument, and Glenn had also told me that. So this was before the internet, and I used to go to the research library, the main research library in Sydney, and just pore over books, old anthropological books and on ethnomusicology and photocopy the images and that's why you'll see some of the images today are pretty pretty dodgy um, because uh, they've just been photocopied out of old books um, and uh, then I began to research rhythms in different time signatures and we'll talk a, a little more about that and so this whole world of the the frame drum uh, opened up for me and it so it's been a long journey of teaching and working with healing with um, working with sound frequency studying with um, shamanic practitioners to look at how rhythm and sound change our brain waves and um, work with the cellular structure in the body so it's been a an incredible path for me an incredible healing path for me and hopefully I've been able to um, pass on some of that knowledge and healing to to others and um, yeah, Laura, I can't hear you. Gee, Paul, yeah. <laughs> see how it's to turn on the mics. Yeah. It's so interesting when we hear the call, yes. and then it may lie dormant for many years while we have to go and get develop other skill sets and have other adventures, and then it awakens. And to to set out on that quest when you're called, really is the fulfillment of a life. It makes life so exciting and adventuresome and uh, absolutely and it's, yeah, a it's a language your, to know your core sure. it's a language yeah it's a language i mean the, the that that's the reality is you the more you look at this and especially when you get into the finger drumming and the style of drumming that you uh you share is it's got a language it speaks so deeply and passionately and it gives us so yeah. many so many layers of of, of uh, communication absolutely and, and, you know, there's different sounds that the drum um, has that relate to the elements. So the ancient ones knew, you know, that rhythm was a technology of transformation. And also um, that it was, you know, as you know, used in ritual and ceremony. And there's different uh, strokes on the drum that relate to the elements of fire and water and earth and, and air. And uh, yes, it, it's it's a language that that comes from the earth and offers offers back to the earth. Mm. You know, it's People think of just something. percussion, but there's so much more that a drum can do. Well, right. Yeah, in some ways, yeah. that you know, where most people are familiar with, of course, you're using the stick and and the drumming, and that's or your hands, it's, it's powerful. Or your but as you move to the hands and the fingers, and you have that that sensitivity and, and that tactile, the, the, all of a sudden the feminine approach to drumming and it brings out that female <laughs> element of of not pounding feeling and sharing you know yeah beautifully put very mm. nice paul very nice yes. and because As a of drummer. course yes yeah. and you know it, it's sexy it's skin on skin when you're mm. playing this way and you can bend the notes and uh, stretch the sound and scratch the skin and and uh, there's there's so many it's a dialogue it's a dialogue yeah. Well, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think just a demo and show uh, us your drums that you have at hand because you've talked about this. We want to hear it and experience it. 
That's what I was going to say. Still, uh, before we get into the slideshow, let's have a little sound for us to get people, because it's like, okay, what are we talking about here? Let's, yeah. let's share let's a little bit. Let's hear what you're describing. Sure. Well, look, having talked all about that with the, with the hands and mm -hmm. how sexy it is as an instrument, I would like to, first of all, begin um, with a, a beta and just yes. play a simple rhythm to offer a, to offer a, a blessing prayer um, to everyone that's here Thank today. You. So this is a drum. This is one of the first drums that I made in 1993 when I got back, first of all, from New Mexico. Um, I developed a style that um, has a handle, a wooden handle at the back. Um, so she's an old girl, this one. She's 30 years old and still going. So I'd just like to offer a, a short uh, blessing from spirit to all. Koti ai sai ilo i kai shala i main sai luka i i aia. Hoi nai sai ole i anglai e koi shala mai nea. He, hoi le kai moende. O ki sala in doi ala a a a sholi sala am o kala in de. Oh, he le kai shala mo tiklai o ya ya ya. Ole ho 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 he he Kati ole mahinge Koloxia e noile Kale ho ho He angole ando he akoe Mawote 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 Oe bo kali hainde shale ho maning glai o ele o ke e on manung le o shai e kai ai nai ele e o oe main koya shaina shaina e sailo o e kai no 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 ya baya e shi sailo e Singai elitia, o shikai sala ando i nai nai ki ilo isiri kai na i i indokol o o shala e selea. So that sets the stage. <laughs> uh, we need to activate those brains, yeah, yeah. right? Okay. To, to receive. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, all righty, lads and lassies. Let's. Shall we have a look at um, some of the some of yes, the images? Yes, we'll follow your lead. That and then we'll come good. back, and I'll chat a bit more, and we'll we'll come back. Yeah, and, and then we'll do them. another little finger thing later on, and yeah. Yeah. Let's see where we go. Okay. So I'd like to just begin by what is a frame drum? Um, so pe people, uh, th when, when we think of a, a, a drum, we think of, often of the, the Native American style or sometimes the Siberian style um, that has the woven rawhide handle like this type here. These are, these are all drums that I've, I've made at different styles. So a frame drum, uh, here we have another style of frame drum um, from um, uh, Tibet. A frame drum is any drum where the diameter of the head is greater than the depth of the body. 
So here we have another style of frame drum. This is a woman, this is a contemporary image of a woman called Ama Bombo. Um, she's also a Tibetan woman. In this style of frame drum, she's holding it in her left hand with a, uh, like a handle um, and playing it with a curved stick. So there's many, many different ways of playing. At this stage, I'm just showing the styles of frame drum that we're more familiar with, which is the type where you um, hold it in one hand and play with a beater. So um, the, the diameter of the head, so the face of the drum, is greater than the depth of the body. Here's a beaut, I love this image of uh, three Native American women. Um, playing a traditional style of frame drum, what would be called the medicine drum. Some of these styles, you just saw one very similar, well, they're actually the same one that I just played here. Some of them have a handle at the back. Here's another type of frame drum. This is another one that I've made, where you can see they're kind of round and flat. Now, the frame drum actually evolved from the grain sieve, Here's the, the exact drum that I was just playing. Um, this one I made, like I said, in 1993, I think, or 1992. And I've made that as a seven-sided drum. But, um, oops, here we can see another one that's round. I've used 18 pieces of solid timber here. But if you can imagine a grain sieve, the, the early... Um, the ancient, in ancient times, the men were the hunters um, of the animals, but the women were the skinners. And so at some point, a woman has put, gone, hmm, let's put this over a grain sieve. And, you know, it's a membrane and has stretched a skin over um, a, simple, a simple frame. Now... Here we have the earliest known depiction of a frame drum. The early frame drums were very small, smaller than this style that I have here. Here's my hand. You can see my, this is about, I guess, 12 inches in diameter. This image here, you can see in the bottom, this is from a, um, a cave painting from about, um, I think it's 5800 BC. Um, it's the earliest known depiction of, of a woman, pay, um, anybody, in fact, um, playing a drum. Excuse me. In her right, in her uh, one hand, she's holding a thing which we, we think is some sort of a beater. It looks like a, a lamb chop. Um, and it's from Shuttle Huyuk, um, which is modern day Turkey. And um, it's a cave painting. And in the whole of the image, which I'm not showing here, that show, it depicts a whole lot of different women that are dancing around um, what appears to be a bison. And there's also um, creatures that are like leopards or something with spots. But it's the first one where we, we think that it's a woman playing some sort of, um, some sort of frame drum. Doesn't that look like an antler or some kind of a horn or something? Yes. Because that's what the men would be napping the flint with, right? Absolutely. So those, those would be handy. They'd be around. They'd be absolutely around. Mm -hmm. They'd be absolutely around. So that's quite an extraordinary... It's a long time the frame drum has been around. Mm. Now, this is a beautiful... I love this image. Um the first written depiction that we have of a woman, and I'm going to get into more of, um, anyway, I won't talk about that now. The first, the, the first known woman drummer uh, that we, is recorded is a priestess called Lipushau, L-I-P-U-S-H-A-U, from Ur um, in Samaria. Now, this statue, they believe, is from... 2380 BC um, and you can see her again with a, a, a small frame drum um, even a bit smaller than that one uh, now she Lipishal was um, the the priestess at, in the temple of uh, the the uh, temple of the moon and she's the first recorded 
woman we know who played the frame drum. Now, in, in ancient Samaria, the frame drum was really revered. Um, it, there were ten, two measures of meal offered to the great well and ten measures of meal offered to the frame drum. So we have a little little bit of the sense of the importance and the reverence of the frame drum in um, in ancient Samaria. This is another one of Lipushao. And um, I'm going to get in the, the hand. What, what One thing you, Paul and Laura, you might find interesting um, is the postures. They're always shown with the actual playing style. This woman here, Lipushao, another one of Lipushao, it's very small, this. I think it might be ivory. She's, she's got her hand like this, and this is the earth element. We'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate the different styles after I've shown um, a, few, a few of the images. But it's also called the Kali note. It's the dull sound on the, on the drum. It's, the, it, it's almost like it's, it's not there, but that's the style she's playing, the stroke she's playing um, in this particular image. Also with that image, Jane, it appears to be the indication of moving the hand across a scratching looking kind of sound at the top of the drum. Oh, you can see the striations. Striations of the fingers, fingers which is also yes. a style of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She's, she's deep in reverie, mm. yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I hadn't noticed that with the scratching. So this is the first the oldest known still existing frame drum frame. Mm. Um, I took this, this came from the Louvre. I was very excited to find this image. Um, and that's from Egypt. Yeah. yeah, so that's quite extraordinary that that still even exists. But there you can see the bent wood frame. Um, and just, yeah, it's again about a foot or 11 inches in diameter. And that's from uh, ancient Egypt. So I'm going to show a couple of images now um, from ancient Egypt. This is on papyrus. Mm. We can see the image on the right uh, of them playing in this exact style. Holy and the, Im the image on the left, they also played a square frame drum, mm. ah. which is fascinating. Not a book. It's a drum. It's a, it's a drum. It's a drum. Mm. Because we'll see here, there it is there. Ah, yeah, so yeah. there there she is and you can see her again. She's got her hand in that same, this hand here. Um, yes. What she's doing is squeezing. Uh, you can't see that, but I'm squeezing the skin to get a... Can you hear that differentiation yes, we can, in yeah. sound? Mm -hmm. So you bend the notes with one hand and she's doing all sorts of um, uh, different, different sounds and strokes that relate to the elements with the, with the other. Mm. Have you and made a, a square drum? Is it different? I have. Does, are there different points of tension in the corners as opposed to being uh, around where it'd be more evenly distributed? How does yes. that work? How it works is that um, uh, it's, there's a lot more tension when you've only got four joins. Mm -hmm. So these, the ones I was showing you before that I make have 18 pieces here you can see. Of, so I use solid timber. Mm -hmm. um, so that is distributed over 18 tension points. These ones you have to have the timber quite thick because there's only four tension points. But then... You don't, um, it's also dependent on how tight you, you make the skin. Mm -hmm. um, but they're yeah. fascinating. And what I found really interesting um, was that I came across an image of contemporary women, well, contemporary, this is from the 60s. Glenn Velez gave me this image. I just love these women um, mm -hmm. from Portugal. And they play a square drum, but of course they play it that way so that it's a diamond. They have it uh, with the point upwards. And um, the women in Portugal to this day, they're, they're also the drum makers. And it's a drum called an adufe, A-D-U-F-E. Um, sometimes they have a skin on each side with little shot pellets inside. And, you know, some people would be familiar... 
what's called the ocean drum, you know, that goes whoosh. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's, it's an old, it's an old drum. And, um, so they put shot pellets in it and they, but they play it in the same way and they shake it in a very, uh, very similar to the way they're played in Iran and some parts of the Middle East. There's two, so two points I wanted to ask you about, Jane. Number one is you're holding the hand from underneath. Not only are you using it to squeeze to get the different sounds, but it also gives you that opportunity to use those fingers correctly. Sometimes yes. there's an opportunity to use those fingers that is holding the drum to give an additional mm -hmm. uh, percussive sound. Yes, so these, the, the main finger that's used in uh, frame drumming is the ring finger, mm. and uh, which I find fascinating because for most people, and I want, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll get into what happened and why the frame drum is no longer, um, why women don't know that they have a traditional instrument that, and I'm not only talking about, I'm talking about white women as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit, but um, yeah, the main finger that is used in frame drum playing on the left and right hands is the ring finger. And it's become pretty well a dead finger with a lot of my students. Um, they find it very hard to activate the ring finger because really, you know, it's for the wedding ring. And unless you're a typist or a pianist, you don't really use it much. And what I find um, with, with people that I'm teaching is when they start reactivating the ring finger, it brings up all sorts of um, emotions. Some people get quite angry and, mm. uh, and some, a, a lot of people at initially be, feel a little nauseous because it's, um, it's activating the um, uh, stomach meridian and the triple heater meridian. And so when we start activating these fingers you know it starts opening up different meridians in the body you're reclaiming your power on some degree aren't you mm. for absolutely absolutely yeah the other thing i notice is with the egyptian uh image there's the curved sides to the square box drum but those curved sides are probably created by the, the tension of the uh, skin correct the skin would be pulling it in yes uh, yeah. Absolutely, because obviously they they weren't able to make the solid frames the way that um, that I can make them. So that mm. would be something, yeah, much, yeah, yeah, flimsier. Just like yes. we saw in this one, it's yes. just quite thin wood that's that's been bent. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Are there so different regions absolutely... on a square drum where it sounds differently towards a corner, towards the middle? Yeah. Um, yeah, different different parts of the drum have different sounds and you can get a whole lot of different harmonics. Mm. Um, hopefully when I do a bit more playing, you'll be able to hear that, but I'm not sure with Zoom how much will, will come through. But it, I, do notice, I do notice natural skin drums have that voice of all different parts of the drum head. Mm -hmm. um, if, you go, if you go to a synthesized drum head, it doesn't have the voice. That, you can't yeah. go from the edge to the center to the other point to find those different voices as much. It's kind of all blended together. But That's the right. natural skin drum has... Analog versus digital. Yeah, analog yeah. versus digital, right. Um, has that ability. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And of course, then you've still got the spirit of the animal too. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. That's a really imp oh. important, important, part, important of it. part for me, you know, and um, I, I think if you're going to make a sacred instrument, then make it really sacred. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, I think synthetic drums have their place yeah. uh, because they don't fluctuate in the weather mm -hmm. because they're dead, they're plastic. Um, mm -hmm. You know they're still useful, um, mm -hmm. but they don't. They're not. Res they're not responding to the elements. You know they're not breathing the way a natural skin drum does. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and of course, when you make a drum, part of what my I feel my responsibility is is to bring the animal, give it a new life in a way. You know, you you take the you take a, a dead bit of tree basically, you know, which is the wood and a, um, a dead bit of animal. And the process of drum making, you're bringing them, um, it's an alchemical process of bringing them back to life in a new form. And um, yes, yeah, so there's, um, 
there's a magic in that and a responsibility in that too. Beautiful. And it's a teacher. These ladies are not wearing any rings on their fingers. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's right. Because that would weight your finger. It would de- it would impact how you play. Maybe it would yeah. enhance it. Maybe it would detract it. I don't know the weight of the the, the ring. rings. And also, it can get in the way if you're yeah. you know, yeah. if you're playing right on the rim. It can kind of get in the way. But I guess they're peasant women. They probably didn't have any jewelry. Oh, I love this. I love this image. So this is, uh, this is an early Israeli image. I don't look for a lot of these. I don't have the exact dates. Um, but um, I, it's around 2000 BC. And uh, again, you can see the same hand posture um, there where she's, uh, she's doing this exact same thing with the hand. And the early... Um, uh, Israeli, well, it wasn't Israel then, of course, but it was found in Israel, contemporary Israel. Um, it was called the Tof, T-O-F, uh, and also the Timbrel. And there's many references in the in the Old Testament to the Timbrel. So we're starting to um, get a sense of you know that of of women being mentioned in the Old Testament uh, with these with the frame drum in Exodus. It talks around uh, Miriam, the prophetess, um, mm-hmm. sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hands and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancers. Um, so I just will talk a little bit now while I've got this. So um, I'll just uh, demonstrate a little bit on the, this same similar size frame drum to the one that she's playing here. Um, so I mentioned that there are different strokes on the drum that relate to the elements. So this one that she's playing here with a hand is pretty well in the, excuse me, in the center of the drum, actually dampens it down and you get a dull sound. But when it's accompanied with, so obviously it needs something else. So when it's accompanied, for example, with the water element, which is dum, spelt contemporarily D-H-U-M or D-U-M, it's the deepest tone on the drum. If you, I don't know how, how that sound is coming through, but Beautiful. you can have a sense of, of water and how water is expanding out. Now, you can play that with the ring finger, like I was mentioning, or also with the thumb. So when you, so for example, if you were, um, the ancients were doing a, a rhythm around water and earth or water within earth, they might combine the two strokes of the water element with the earth like we can see here. And it might be something like. Does that sound? Uh, it's, it's working amazing. great. Hey, oh, this is good. Zoom. We're very fortunate. This is working as well as it is. That's good because it's very tricky with the frame drum on on Zoom because there are all sorts of harmonics that create. Um, they yeah. sort of cancel the sound out. Yes. Um, so where are we? Well, there's another one. You can see again. This is another uh, statue that was um, from Palestine, Israel, with again that same. Uh, a slap in the middle and you can see just with this one that she's got her finger just the index finger a little bit apart and we're going to be talking and looking at some others um, the Irish style of drumming evolved from this where the split finger technique but we um, we'll get to that this is one of my old photocopies into this ancient art isn't there Mm -hmm. Sorry, Laura, what did you say? The... A lot of information packed into this ancient art. 
Oh, look, absolutely. One, mm. Once it, it opens up, it was, it was quite mind-blowing for me. And it was like, how did I not know? So I, I want to just stop here um, for a second with this image because we're going to uh, – I'm going to take myself off, but this is to remind me now to, to talk about this, um, what happened and a little bit of the history. Uh, now I've got to get stop share. So the, as you know, you can see a few of the ancient images there and we can see that the frame drum um, has, a, has gone back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And it was the main instrument for worship, ceremony, um, changing brain states. The ancients knew. The ancients knew about um, technologies of transformation. They knew about all these things that, you know, uh, we, we, we have returned to and are returning to. And when, and I'm not just talking about uh, Africa, you know, a lot of people say to me, as white women, they say to me, I don't have a sense of rhythm. Only black people, only black people have, have a sense of rhythm. And you know what? That is not true. Or only indigenous people have a sense of rhythm. It's just that it was taken away from white women earlier. And of course, you know, indigenous people have also been through their terrible trials. But as a white woman's instrument, it was, it's just that it was taken away earlier. So it was our main instrument of worship, like I said, for thousands and thousands of years. And then when Rome adopted Christianity around, it was a bit, around 200 AD, it was actually made an act of heresy for women to play the drum. And, and after thousands and thousands of years of being consistently the main instrument of worship. Um, and there are literally... Like once you start researching, there are literally thousands of images, ancient images of women playing the drum. So it was actually made an act of heresy and women were burnt and tortured and everything else and, um, you know, for that. And so obviously, you know, it was no longer uh, played in public, as is still the case in some Middle Eastern countries today for women. But I'm talking now about Europe. I'm talking about, for so many of us, our own history, yeah. um, just for, for white women. And, of course, it's, it's the, the frame drum's been played um, in most cultures of the world. But most European women don't know that they have um, their own traditional drum through their own white ancestry for the white women. That we could trace back Present. to that our we could indigenous trace, ancestors we in that part of the world. It was political that it, it was. It was political. What's yeah. happened rhythmically? It was an act of disempowerment. Yeah. yeah. No, look, absolutely. And um, when the drum re-emerged into, and I'm, I'm talking about Europe here, uh, when the drum re-emerged into the culture, it re-emerged um, as a military instrument. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know for the crusades and all, all of that and then what um, the time signature from that time on became 4-4 four, four in rhythmically because it's the number of structure mm -hmm. four Squares. the square or the cross it's the number of order and structure and there's not and it's the it's it's the rhythm good rhythm for marching Mm -hmm. Being bipeds, we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So what we lost um, was access to so much of our psyche through rhythms in other time signatures. So, you know, the ancients played rhythms in five mm -hmm. and sevens and mm -hmm. nines and 11s for childbirth and 5s for times of change and 7s, and, and you know, the number of transformation and 9s for rituals. And, and each one of those rhythmic time signatures is a body of information within itself. So what I started 
um, let me just break in and say you can see this dancing. You can see the box step. If you've done ballroom dancing, the box step, you're literally making a square, right? Yeah. And yeah. so you see that same kind of structure and rigidity and um, as opposed to jazz, right? As opposed to stepping outside with all these other wonderful, wild, dynamic rhythms that Steps. are in play. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, 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 that are outside symmetry. Oh, look, it's there in dancing. It's there in our architecture. I mean, yes. you look at, you know, not in your beautiful building, but, you know, most architecture is the Roman it's a architecture, the symmetry, the order, the Greek columns, you all, know. Yeah. All of that. And, you know, we're thinking outside the square. But so what we lost rhythmically, you know, it wasn't just musical. It was access to the bodies of divine information that are encoded within numerical information in a way so what I started experiencing was like five what happens when I play a rhythm in five and I found you know I, I rhythm has taught me the frame drum has taught me um, the discipline to get beyond um, boredom and when you get beyond that you break open into something else and so I would just stay what happens when I'm in five and 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 my brain would go okay that's enough now and it was at that moment where the ego steps in when I know okay it's afraid something is going to um, transform here and so what it usually does is it goes okay I'm bored but if mm. we can stay with a rhythm a repetition the power of repetition which we know about with them um, shamanic through you know shamanic trance states of doing it for a long period of time and what happens to the brain waves um mm -hmm. the change from beta, differently beta to yeah. theta and and all of that and so i wondered if we um could you play what, four oh, yeah. and then five can we hear the difference yeah, yeah. I, I thought okay i will um but I, I thought maybe we wrong could... with the four beat, but we just need all of it. We need yeah. the full spectrum, Look, right? There's nothing wrong yes. with four. It's a great number, yes. but it's only it's only one number yeah. in in a whole spectrum. And uh, yeah, and so we lost um, um, we lost so much, and that's part of my mission is to bring that bring that back. But look, let's um, let's experience before I do play. Um, something let, let's have a go do you want to have a go? you all want to have yes. a little go at something we'll just do it instead of drumming we'll just do it clapping okay. um so yes. now what i'll i know we won't be able to do it in sync because of the delay but no. that's all right you'll be able to do it in your own way so what i'm going to invite you to do is to just we're just going to um clap on the one and then the other notes we won't clap but you can do it with your feet. So, but first of all, let's just, with our feet, I want you to set this up. Just go dum, dum. Because pulse and rhythm are different. So at the level of pulsation, we are all connected. It's like the universal beat. But at the level of rhythm, it's like um, pulse is the collective and then at the level of rhythm, it's the cultural overlay. And so we are all one, as we know, and yet we're all individuals. So we have pulse at a bedrock level, and then we have rhythm that we overlay on top of that. So if we all connect at the level of pulse by, let's all do this with your feet. Let's just go dum, dum, dum. And just establish that either standing or sitting. You can just lift one foot up if you're standing. Just step. Dum, 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 dum. So we're all doing that at the same time. And now I want you to just feel that drop your energy right down into your belly. So just ground. We've got dum. Oh, you got my, can you hear that snap, snip, uh, snipping, snapping? So... Now bring your awareness down into your deep belly so that you're not budgeable. We have a tendency in the West to for our energy to rise up into our head. Rhythm doesn't come from counting. It comes from 
deep down in our belly and our womb. Doom, doom. And then when you feel ready, what I'm going to invite, we're going to just a very simple experience what it feels like to just clap a very rhythm, a simple rhythmic cycle in different time signatures. So when you feel ready, we're going to start with four and all you're going to do is go like this, clap one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, beautiful, three, and just get in that groove, one, two, three and four and one, two, three and four, one, two, three and four and one, two, a few more times and four and one, two, beautiful, three, two more times and one, two, three, four, last time, one, two, three, try five, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, and five, and one. One, two. Now I've let the numbers go on purpose. Two. Just feel it. Four, five, and Let's stop there for a sec. What are you feeling in your body? What happened? What did you notice, anybody? What did you notice when we went from four? How did you go? Were you able to, to do that? How did it feel? I wish we could be in sync. Um, felt a tingling in your upper legs, absolutely. It's very activating, but like Bob said, it does stir things up. Um, I can't really see, what's that say? At first the five made me. Hold my breath. At five made, made me hold my breath, then it became playful as I relaxed. Yes, yes, at first it's, it's like, ah, what, you know, it's so, un, it's so unfamiliar. And I, you know, I personally think that globally where we are on the planet is we're leaving the four, we're leaving the structure, we're leaving the order, we're in the stage of the dismantling now as a, as a culture, as a collective, you know, and we're moving into more a number five, which is the number of chaos and change and chaos of course can be good if it's we hit that bifurcation point you know um, um, so what I'm going to invite us to do now oh let me just uh, read another couple Five yes felt please like coming home says Jolene brought tears to my eyes yes Rick says a lot of energy in my abdomen yeah. I want to also TH say also said more tingling in my arms and my I also want to say in art history um, you have the um, dynamic Baroque right, which is about fluidity, movement, interaction, as opposed to the more static, uh, oh. you know, four and symmetry and structure. Yeah. When you step out of symmetry, you've got movement. Right? Yes. You don't have stasis, you have transcendence. Absolutely. And, yeah. and that, that's really reflected in those um, uneven numbers rhythmically because they don't resolve, right. you know, they, they, they demand a continuation. They're not at they rest. Do, They're absolutely. in motion. Yeah. Yes, yes. You, you, you can't, it, it shows how time, rhythm, which is time, is, is cyclic. It, it's, we, we're no longer in linear time, um, which is the, and time is not linear. You know, we're just, <laughs> we, we've been told time is linear. We think the future's ahead and the past is back. It's all actually happening in the present moment. Um, I also want to mention um, Farhad's, Farzad's uh, comment, really interesting. He says, time signatures, since we're on that subject, time signatures are key to facilitating entrainment, coupling of musicians, dancers, participants, and birth contractions. Did midwives play drums to assist birth? 
Yes, and in fact, that's part of what I do is I, I, I work with, um, well, when I say I do, I've done it four times um, with women because, of course, it, it's, a, it's, pain, it's pain relief as well. But you can also be, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you're sort of steering them through the, through the rhythm and through the energy that's created. You, you're creating a, um, um, a chalice, you know, that helps, helps guide them, um, helps um, distract them perhaps for a moment away from the, from the birth pain. And also, you know, when you, it depends what rhythm, uh, as, you know, Fahad says, it, it's, it works with entrainment. Um, so for any that don't, I'm sure you are familiar with it, but for any that don't know about entrainment, in a nutshell, it's like um, um, if, if you have two, two grandfather clocks and the, the, the pendulum is swinging at different rates, um, eventually the, um, they will come into a synchronization. So the, the less dominant pulse will come into a synchronization with the more dominant pulse. So if you're playing a rhythm or playing a rhythm um, and you become the dominant pulsation through repetition and through intention and mm -hmm. through, you know, there's, there's individual invisible stuff going on that you're, that you're beaming at, at people uh, and you become that dominant pulsation, then their brainwave will go into a... Um, a state of theta from beta um, so you know which is between four and eight cycles per second so you can slow the brain waves down you can raise them up and of course not just the brain waves but also um, the heartbeat and all of these we are rhythm you think of you know our the whooshing of your blood through your veins the, the beat of your heart the beat of mother absolutely. earth absolutely Absolutely, yeah. the nervous system. You know, yeah. all of all of it. We're we're in. Is that so traumatic for a baby cycle. being birthed? So I imagine you know you set that up. It's hearing, it's feeling the vibrations. You want to help calm that baby for its journey as well. So yeah, do they bring absolutely. you in early, like for the whole thing, or yes, yeah. usually. Yeah. Usually, yeah, it, it's a build up to it. You can't just sort of come on and perform. It's a, right. it's a, it's a shamanic process for hours really yeah, yeah. let's so go back that question you were going to say Certainly. yeah well, and go ahead let's go back to slides is that what you're going to say no I, I just want to go back to just okay. feeling this for a sec um okay. there was a comment can could you read that comment out to me it said something about at the beginning they wanted to move because i can't really see the chat so i can only see the first okay um let me see way back in the beginning <clears throat> no, it was quite recently. Oh, okay. I wanted to shift. Excuse me, losing my voice. Mm. <clears throat> Laura, can you... I wanted to shift before you led us to clap. One on my right hand as well. So felt, well, more balanced when five led us to alternate firmer. Cynthia, I don't quite understand what you meant by that. But... Um... Sure, well, that's great. Great she felt more balanced anyway. Let's go, let's go back to that again. Um, and I'm going to lead us through, we'll keep it up, um, um, entrainment used by charismatic, that's all I can see, but it's going to say preachers or something, does yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, that's oh, right. Bob yeah. says it's, entrainment used by charismatic people to control others. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, it's a, it's a, it's a hypno, it's a, it's a, you can use it for hypnosis. Absolutely. Uh, oh, I see. Got it. Good and bad. Got yes. it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything can be used for good or bad. Yeah. yeah. Good or bad. Exactly. Yeah. Let's go back to just establishing the pulse. So at the level of pulsation, we're all connected. So we're going to set that up again. We're going to have dum, dum, dum. So I invite you to just get that in your feet or... Standing or sitting, dum, dum. Just the universal pulse, pulse, pulse. And now let's set up that rhythm again in four. And then I'm going to invite us to experience a couple of different rhythmic cycles. So we've got one, two. And I will stop the counting after a while. One, two, three. 
So you can come in now. One. Let's try five and one, two. Seven, one, two, three, four. Feel it, five, six. Just enjoy it and one. And one. Five. Four and five. Four, five, one. One, one, stay with that for a second, one, five, one, four, one, one. One. Last time for one. Four. Beautiful. What did you notice, if anything? How did you go with the five, the seven? I wanted to try three. <laughs> yeah, three. Well, three's three's beautiful. I love that. How um, did you go? Did any? Because what can often happen is. Um, we've been so conditioned in our brain that people actually um, revert to the four even when they're doing the five. Mm. Um, or sometimes, yeah. yeah, even numbers activate the one. Yeah. Suddenly, even, odd numbers activate alternate sides of the body, Tracy said. Mm -hmm. yes. And Anya said the rhythm went very natural for me. Yes, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Uh, that's, that's a good sign. More difficult to do four after the seven and five, TH said. Yes, absolutely. Some a lot of people have the experience of the after they've and this is what just took took a couple of minutes. If we did this for a long four was boring after seven and five. Yeah. And often people feel ah when they go back to four, they have that sense, and that's what I mean by uh, rhythm is political. What's happened to us rhythmically is political. Ah, okay. What we lost, mm -hmm. what we lost when it was made an act of heresy, and Power you know. Play. Yeah. yeah, power play. So, yeah. shall we go back to a few more? Sure. That was yes. an Slide. interesting demo. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, oh, yeah. one question, I because think. Because it is embodied, right? We are the it's, instruments as well. We are, absolutely. We are rhythm. Yeah, we are sound. What's Bianca that? Bianca said it was like walking across the outback in trance, one flow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, I think maybe you can discuss this later, but Anya was just asking about the idea of chanting, the light language, where it comes up during the time that you're drumming, what is what is it, the beautiful sound, it's curious what it means. Do you want to address that now? Um, sure, may as well. Okay. It's, uh, yes, that it's, it's what I call light language. And uh, what I do is I just tune in uh, with the drum and uh, set a, a particular intention to, to see what wants to come through for this particular group. So it's always different. So it's not a set. Um, it doesn't. It, it's. It has a meaning, but it's not. It's not a. It, it's not a, a human meaning even. It's it's coded in a sense. It's just spontaneous. Coded. Yeah, for that particular group, as a, always, as a blessing. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Share the screen. Okay, so we got to that one. So what I wanted to say here was after I talked about um, 
Rome, Rome making it an act of heresy for women to play the drum. Um, so from then on, we have a whole period in history, um, particularly in Europe, um, where we don't, it, it's taken out of the hands, the frame drum, and of course, the jingles, which became the tambourine, is also a frame drum. Um, it's taken out of the hands of mortals and put into the hands of angels. So it becomes unattainable to, to, to mortals. And so there's, there's many images of angels playing the frame drum, but we, we lose a whole lot of the images of women because, of course, they're not going to do it, are they, if they're going to be drowned or burned. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of sad and no good blaming anyone, but there it is. Oh, I love this image. So there oh, yeah. she is. Yeah, so this is, um, um, this is from Greece. It's a statue from Greece, and it shows the ecstaticness um, of the the Mayanads who were, uh, you know, um, groups of women. We're going back be, pre before it was banned. Now, of course, we flip flip backwards um, to the Mayanads who worship Dionysus and the ec ecstatic rites. The frame drum is always associated um, with. Um, the life death regeneration cycle often drums were painted red um, and still are in many indigenous cultures to represent the blood mysteries mm. and very connected to the bee priestesses um, so because the the, the um, and the virgin virgin birth pathog pathogen genesis so here again we see um, statues of the frame drum this little drum like this um, which were the earliest that they they became big later um, can or in the in the company of angels here so this is this is again around two and a half thousand bc oh i have to say there was when i <laughs> There was one of the images I found, um, this was when I was doing this research in the 90s, and I found this image of a woman with a, a frame drum holding it like, like this, similar to how she's holding it. And it, um, the anthrop anthropologist who discovered this ancient statue had labelled it woman with cake. <laughs> uh. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. here's one I prepared earlier. So it's like. You they know. didn't take baking away from us, did they? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank God. The, uh, here, I'll just flip through a couple of these. This is Phoenician. This is uh, this is a tiny little one. Um, some of the Indian drums are about this size, called the Kanjira, and I might get to demo that. Let's see how we go for time. And then we can get into the larger size drums. Um, often played in the lap style now. We start to see them because they're bigger, um, being played where they're held uh, on the lap. Mm -hmm. And that's still, the that's still the main style in like Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan and some of the Middle Eastern mm -hmm. cultures. Here we've got the goddess Chibeli, and she was, uh, she was a Roman goddess. And there's literally hundreds and hundreds of Images of C Y B E L E, uh, Cibeli. She was the big cheese in part of the Roman pantheon, and and Greece and a lot of the, the Greek islands. And she's pretty well always depicted with a frame drum. So you know why it, it shows the power of the frame drum. These are goddesses. You know they're not depicted with anything else but the frame drum to show the absolute. Uh, sacredness of this instrument and you can see here her left hand again like this to squeeze the notes and uh in this style here so maybe i may as well just play a little bit it's an instruction here. manual isn't it it's an absolute instruction manual just gonna dampen this down for a sec I mean, you know, Paul and Laura, you, you know from the postures that there's nothing extraneous. You know, they're showing you in fine detail. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Rich yeah. instructions. Yeah. Embedded. Yes. 
embedded exactly that's a that's a good word for it so so i'll see if i can just play a little sure. something so with this hand here i'm squeezing and i'll just do a little um i want you to see the frame but i'm in a funny position You can hear that. Yeah. They were often the rhythms were played fast. They were played slow. They were depending on um, what 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 it was for. Now we're going to get to Ireland, so I'm sure you know the the Sheila Nagig images. Yes. Yes. So, um, and there, there's, for those of you that don't know, I'm sure pretty well you all would, the, the Sheila Nagig images are found in um, England, uh, Ireland, plenty in Ireland, Wales, a bit of Scotland, and um, the um, Brittany part of France. And I think there are a few up in um, Scandin some sort of Scandinavian countries, but mainly in England. And they're always depicted with their vagina wide open and they're either smiling or they're grimacing um, and then and I, I've always loved these images and uh, I found this image of a Sheila and a gig you can see her mm. um, her vulva wide open there holding a frame drum and I was really really excited because I had already thought that the Sheila and a gigs were the goddess Bridget in her hag form because you know they have different the goddess takes different forms and um, you can see there I think it's the double-headed axe which is um, you know one of the symbols of the goddess I'm speculating but and then there's this disc in her hand and uh, and then it made something made sense to me if it is Bridget in her hag form it makes absolute sense because she the the frame drum in ancient Ireland, before it was called Ireland, was played to the goddess Bridget um, in the rhythmic cycle of six. Now, the, the, the rhythmic cycle of six in Ireland is now called the jig, but we have the word gig. It comes from the word gig. So the Sheelana gig um, was to do with the rhythmic cycle of sick. It's and and Sheila, particularly in this country, Australia. I don't know if it's a derogatory. It's not derogatory here. It's just another word for woman is Sheila, and um, but originally it meant woman of power, mm. and the word gig got translated into the rhythmic cycle of six, which is the um, um, the um, tetrahedron. You know the the yeah. um, star of David. And also the, the the rhythmic the the jig, and then I found whoops another Sheila gig, um, with her you can see her vagina open here, and she's got something under her arm. It's a, it's so old we can't really we can't really tell, um, but um, it appear it's very likely that it's it's also a frame drum, which was very exciting to mm. me. <laughs> So here we're going back to um, ancient Greece. This is a really early, a lot of the frame drum images were on vase paintings. And you can see she's doing what's called the split finger technique here. Oh. So she, again, like we've I demonstrated, she's holding it here, squeezing the skin here. And she's doing this, uh, I'm going to stand up for this so you can, it's this motion here like this. And that, just wanting to follow on with about the Irish, the Boran, some of you might will be familiar with the Irish style of frame drum that's called the Boran or the Boran, B-O-D-H-R-A-N. Mm -hmm. And they took that same, in the northern part of Ireland, they still play in exactly that same way. And in the southern part more, they developed a stick, a little, yes. uh, little tipper, whoop, 
Too and hot. they play, um, so it's played more. Let's see how we go with this. Mm. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. Oh. oh, you can't see anything, can you? So this style of frame drum with a little stick, um, and that was for, really for volume because they started to play with others, other instruments. I don't think that was a great success in terms of um, sound. Um, but what you did get splitting the, eye. the finger do for you? What does it do to do? What does it allow you to do to split the fingers like that? It allows you to play um, really quite quite fast. Din ta din din ta din. Tadikadin, tadikadin. So it's um it's also used in um, the Kanjira style in um, southern well both part, all of India but particularly the frame drum is called a Kanjira in the southern part of India and um, it just means that you can and you can get all sorts of that's a, this is a, a, a um, you know. Gentleman was passing by and he asked for a drink because he was dry at the well below the valley. Oh, we rolled a lily, oh, right among the bushes, oh. So yeah, that, uh, that Irish, playing it in that Irish that. style, yeah. yeah. But you can see the dynamism. I just love some of the facial expressions and the, the, the power in... Um, and these women's here's the uh, a South Indian style, much smaller, really little, and they're playing it. You can see again in this style here. So, back to Chabeli. I thought that was somewhere else. That slide. There she is again. Um, she's always depicted with a lion and a frame drum, and she was, the, you know, main goddess for a, a long time. So. Uh, it shows the importance of the frame drum. Mm. The in ancient Greece, the frame drum uh, again. You can see her finger kind of out was called the tympanum, and um, I love I love this image where she's accompanying some sort of ecstatic, ecstatic dance. Another one of um, from Phoenicia, this one of her playing the frame drum. Again, the tympanum. Powerful, powerful images of women playing. I love this one. This is a vase painting um, from around 2300. BC and here we have you see that same style of frame drumming with the similar decorations and we've got Demeter and Persephone uh, the mother Demeter goddess Demeter with her daughter Persephone and we know the the story about how um, they were she out goes to the underworld. In the, she goes to the she goes to the underworld she's taken down into the underworld um, and then Demeter stops um, in her grief, she stops making the world grow. So she, she, you know, she controls all the, all the vegetation and all of life. So here, here she is, um, with Persephone playing the frame drum while Demeter plants the seeds of life. So you can see the sacred poppies, there, growing, um, to the to the beat of of the drum. Mm. And again, the Mayanads, the um, the women priestesses who went into fabulous states of trance, and there you see the the frame drum as part of that. Yeah. I wonder if there's any connection to May Day because I just remember today's May Day and there's rituals wow. around the planet, people performing and, oh. and dancing and enjoying. 
Oh, oh this absolutely. is so appropriate to schedule, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And the maypole dancing around the Yes, we did the that at the <laughs> You did? Yeah. We have a maypole at the Institute, yes. Now that's a European uh, tradition that yeah. carried forth yeah. to modern yeah. Yes, absolutely. I remember it at school. Did it 30 years ago and we continue that, yeah. yeah. Oh, how beautiful. That's beautiful. I love mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I love this one in the middle here. Just I, I, the ecstatic postures, mm-hmm. just so beautiful. Yeah. So we'll get to Egypt, Egypt. now. Yeah. So this is a deep love of mine is the goddess Hathor. And um, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of images of Hathor playing the frame drum, only the frame drum, or the sistrum, which is the the Egyptian rattle. Right. Paul. So you can see Hathor has the uh, cow ears. Uh, And she's the goddess of, um, she's very connected to uh, childbirth, abundance, sort of fecundity, and also to sound. And you can see her beautiful ears there. And she's known as the cow goddess. Well, she's connected much beyond that, but also with cows. She's depicted with cow ears sometimes. But those ears are something else, eh? So there is an image of Hathor playing the playing the frame drum there. And we have Again. Isis. Yeah. Isis, it's the same tradition. It's the um, yeah, the the Isis the, the Hathor Isis tradition that followed right through to Magdalene, the Rose Line, um, which is my lineage, really, that um, my my teaching lineage, and um, you know through the Bibli- all those biblical women, you know the early biblical women, while they're allowed, um, they played the frame drum called the timbrel. And there she is again, Hathor, um, playing to the god Horus. So Horus, as you know, was the god of the underworld. And there she is uh, either offering or playing her frame drum. And I don't know if that's the alabaster jar, but um, I know from the Magdalene tradition, you know, that she anoints mm. Jesus or Yeshua with the, um, from the, the um, spikenard ointment. From the alabaster jar, so to me it affirms the that that same lineage that carried carried through. Mm. And there she is again. And you can see the image on the left. You can see the sistrum, um, mm-hmm. which is the was a, a metal ra- the early metal rattles. Do you have one, Paul, or do you know of the do, do either of you? You know, we when we did the presentation in Paris, we had a giant one. And the artist had uh, had made so we had this beautiful one that's probably um, I don't know it's it, eight it, feet tall. Nine yeah, feet tall. yeah, it was yeah. incredible. It was it was a representation. It was made with tambourines but I don't, too. Yeah, yeah but the rattles. I don't, I don't have an original one here. No. No. Yeah. No. How extraordinary! Wow, dear. Yeah, I'd love, yeah, I'd love yeah. to see that. And of course the vulture or the serpent coming out of the third eye showing that um, she's a high initiate priestess yes the hieroglyph for joy is the same hieroglyph as to beat the frame drum Mm. how cool is that (laughs) yeah isn't that great And there's Hathor, there's a line of them in this image. I've just cut it down to a couple rows and rows in the temple of Dendera in Mm. the southern part of um, Hathor's temple. And again, playing in this style. And again, Hathor again, you can see the same hand postures there. And there she is again. And that same size, like sort of dinner plate size. Yeah. 
Does anybody have any questions at the moment? Well, there's been some nice comments. Interesting comments. Gone along. Um, I like what Bob Woodruff said earlier. He said that you can see the multiples of four also in our calendar and our timekeeping devices. Four yes. seasons, 12 months, 24 hours, 60 minutes, four weeks. Um, and it's interesting, 60 could also be um, base uh, 60 is very useful and base 12 could have been another numbering system. Um, so that that was interesting. And um, well, Bob also said he has a friend in southern India who's really into frame drums. He said uh, frame drums in, in Hindi culture? In Hindu culture. No, he, uh, he, yeah. I'm assuming so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are. They are. There's um, um, in, in south India, they're called the Kanjira, and mm. they're, they're made um, of either... Fish, fish skin, yeah. oh, like yeah. this one. Usually fish skin and sometimes goat. Um, but they're smaller than this. I sort of base this on a kanjira, um, but they're much smaller. And the other thing they use is lizard. And they're really, I, I did show a little uh, image earlier from South India, and they're just really tiny. And they do very fast um, complex complex rhythms they are in northern india too and i think they're called the dolak but i could be wrong on that <clears throat> excuse me uh you know base 12 is a numbering system right. three and uh four and five and two i mean it encompasses many more rhythms within base 12 to yeah. be a numbering system because it's compatible with all of many more numbers than just 10 interesting yeah. if we had had six fingers We'd probably be using base 12. Well, we, <laughs> some, yeah, we some had the tools. Some did. Um, also, we, well, well, our and, currency, the Australian currency, was in base 12. So was British, and I'm sure American was at some point before we went decimal. Ah, uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah mm. interesting. Um, 12 pennies to the shilling. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, good point. Um, and we knew a, a gentleman who had deciphered Hebrew text with notes he assigned notes to oh, each of the yeah, characters yeah, yeah. i think you could do it with egyptian as well and actually played it as a piece of music oh yeah yeah i remember that yeah. that, was, that was an that interview was we did yeah. so who knows what also layers yeah. of information are embedded in other ancient artifacts yeah, oh, I think we're, just a speculation absolutely yes yeah. like the solfagio codes embedded uh, you know, yeah. that's another story mm. And, you know, Jane, one, there's two things. First of all, just the revelation to everyone uh, that the role of the feminine in the world of drumming. And the, act, the other thing is, is the size of the drum because it just somehow people think size matters, guys especially. And uh, we, You love your taiko drums. Uh, yeah, you? so the size yeah. is, as you can look behind me, I have a four-foot drum. <laughs> you, you gifted me, you gifted Laura and I a kangaroo drum probably... Um, Tiny it's, size. it's over at the institute. I don't have it with me right now. It's but, it's it's about that size. Um, oh, it's even smaller. It's smaller. Even you, smaller, is it? Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. you gave us a very tiny and the and the, the amount it's of exciting. sound that you can get out of that little drum. Yeah, it's just know. amazing. Yeah. It is yeah. amazing. It really is amazing. And um, I think also, you know, of course, they they didn't have very much. They were practical, and um, that's. Uh, they didn't have access very often, at least, to big bison or, <laughs> or whatever. You're limited by the size of your skin. Yeah, yeah. right. Also, exactly. And also, if you had a big frame, it would just bow. So yeah. they, this, this size will hold its shape with the amount of tension that you've got over the skin. Right. And so, of course the... But, yeah, you can get incredible amounts. And, of course, you can play, you can play this sort oh. with a beater. If you want to, I make and sell these sword and teach people to make this. This so you can play with the fingers of both hands, or you can also. It's great for traveling because you can put it in a backpack. They still work that way. Um, uh, using my fingers yeah. here. Let's yeah. finish this. Okay, one. I'll just flip through a few then. So this is just more, that, that's a little tiny one, like the Kanjira size. This is the god Bess. Um, he, the god Bess was often played, shown playing a frame drum. I love him. Again, from ancient Greece. 
the bird goddess, Hawk. Beautiful. Mm. Don't rush. If you have stories to tell about some of the slides, go ahead and take your time. Yeah, no, look, this is, um, this is a Moroccan woman, and it's in black and white, obviously, but if that was in colour, you'd see that that's red. Mm. Like I said, the frame drum has always been associated with the blood mysteries, women's blood mysteries, and, of course, red is the colour of uh, life and connection to the life, birth, regeneration cycle. But, of course, you know, um, I was presenting at a, a conference thing and they had stalls, um, I also had a little stand where I was selling some drums. This is years ago. And there was an Afghani woman who came up to me and, you know, said, you know, we, she whispered, you know, we still can't play that, our drum in, in public. Mm. And, you know, this was like only 10 years ago or something. It's still the same. So it's, um, we're regaining it in the West, um, not because it's banned anymore, but because we... You know, we, we haven't known until very recently that, you know, as white, as white women, for those that are white women, I'm not saying we all are here, um, we haven't known that we have our own traditional instrument and it's not the djembe and it's not the conga, it's the yeah. frame drum. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. But I wanted to just honour some of the cultures where it's still banned to this day, um, which are many of the, the Middle Eastern cultures. This one's actually from Morocco. She is playing outside, but um, not the case for everybody. Oh, that's me, a few years ago. And this woman I love, that's the last one. And I'll just show you, here you can, um, you, it's hard to see, but there's two little wires that are aren't strung on the inside of the skin. You can see the two little lines going across. Um, and that's called a bendier, and that's um, that it does a particular buzzing sound that um, um, honors the insects and, and brings in that high vibration insect energy. Uh, and, and I just love her, her pri the pride in this woman. Yeah. I just love this image, so I really yeah. wanted to honor yeah. her and the, the lineage, the lineage of women that have gone for so long that went through um, so much and somehow the frame drum stayed alive through through all that time um, it went into a sort of a, a a dormancy for a while but it's back and you know like i like to say the power is in our hands literally and you know metaphorically beautiful. yeah thank you so much jane that I mean, was beautiful yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a wonderful collection and, and, and just the, the uh, inspiration. I think one of the main points also that you've brought out here, and I, I think it ties in with uh, Dr. Goodman, the Kuyamunga Institute, and what we hope to follow, and that is is that all of us of humanity have an indigenous element to ourselves. Some of us have, have forgotten history. We have forgotten language. We have forgotten um, um, our ancestors. And you're talking about the world of the frame drum and how that has been lost and or at least being forgotten and now being brought back piece by piece by piece that we can we're rediscover. Just suppressed. So it's a, an element where we don't have to co-op culturally someone else's tradition. We can also learn traditions from our own. And That's we can also right. help, help be a part of that tradition, a uh, part of that movement to revive, to bring back, to reinstall. So not releasing. So is that idea that... Um, I know that Dr. Goodman was very clear on the fact that she didn't uh, think that the Institute, even though we're in this most special place in the, in the planet, being in, on the indigenous land of the Pueblo people, we don't want to play Pueblo. We don't want to be a Pueblo member. We haven't been asked to be a Pueblo member. Tremendously beautiful, amazing people with very deep and rich traditions that we don't know about. And we're mm -hmm. kind of fortunate that we don't know, that we can be there and just allow the spirit of the work that we do to have its own voice. And like that, with what you're saying about the world of the frame drum, is that it is an opportunity for us to listen and to find that rhythm again and to bring that back and these histories. Because it's universal and it's embedded there in our very physiology and it's something that we're tuned to, we're hardwired for, right? And it was it's a, universal, so right. it's all of our tradition. It's a universal, right. common 
tradition bedrock. And so my 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 yes, and so in that that suppression of knowledge of of uh, mm-hmm. that part of ourselves that's happened not only just with the drumming, but just with what you're calling the sermonic traditions, what you we're referring to today, um, is something that um, you know we're rediscovering, we're finding. Uh, there's tremendous research and in, in, in documentation anthropologically about what what cultures were doing previous to certain things happening in history, and so uh, it's wonderful that. Um, what you're bringing to the world and what your work is doing and how that's re-inspiring uh, those of us that feel like, where am I? Where do I fit in? Yeah. That's how we found this institute in the first place. Uh, Laura was talking about that on a radio program back who in the- Who are my indigenous ancestors? Who where are, are they? I want to meet ancestors. them. What are they doing? You know, we were cut we off at the knees so early on. Yeah. We're yeah. a broken people. And someone called in yeah. to, the, to the radio show and said, you need to find, you need to go talk to Dr. Goodman. Dr. Goodman oh. has a story to tell. You're going to like to hear what she has to say. Wow. And that's so that's incredible. where we, you know, Laura called her up. That's the just, question. Yes, my Can dear, come on down. a legitimate path back to our own indigenous ancestors? Yes, we're one human family, but I don't want to step on anybody else's traditions. Where are mine? Mm. Well, exactly, and I, I, I think that's what, you, you know, why I talk about the difference between pulse and rhythm. Yeah. At the level of pulse, we're all connected, we're all one, you know, we're all just a spark of God or the divine. Yeah. So let's just make that a given, and then on top of that, find our, indivi- our individuality. Mm-hmm. So we are all one, but we don't have to be one amorphous sort of blob of mashed potato, you know, like... <laughs> Unity like, and their diversity. Yeah, yeah, they both exist, you know, and yeah, it's, it's make very... Make go round. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. very exciting. Our own lineage, but also our own individual voice as yeah. well. Yeah. So, Absolutely. I know yeah. there are comments. I know yeah, that. We'll get some yeah. of the questions. And you're welcome to raise your hands to, to talk to Jane directly uh, using the um, Zoom function of a reaction button where you can raise your hand we'll take some so questions empowering and really uh, you know the whole quest is about let's find our way back let's reclaim yeah. our power it's yeah. time for women to do this in general it's time for humanity to do this in general time for the individuals to do this in general find our own relationship our, yeah. our what is our world and our place in it that's a yeah. sacred quest yeah. and this is such a huge <clears throat> part of it to find our voice our rhythm yeah the dance oh Look, absolutely. I think, you know, when you lose your when you lose your rhythm and your voice, you know, you lose an aspect of your soul is taken away. So it's a re souling um, to find that it's not just going boom boom. It, it it's a whole it's, you know, a complete you know thing. Let's give ourselves permission again. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. For men and women. And men and women. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you have suffered just as much as we have through history. Because you haven't been able to see the full flowering of the female for so many <laughs> centuries. Here we are. <laughs> you We're suffered here. too. Yeah. <laughs> you are better with us in our full power. We help bring you into your full power. This is the message. Yes. And he's living it. Let me tell yeah. you, he's living it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So. Well, I- interesting. I-, I also was going to... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good job, Laura. Um, <laughs> <Thank you. absolutely. laughs> I also like the fact that when we look, we do learn from indigenous people that maintain traditions. We can be inspired. We can yeah. rediscover through the fact that sure we've been sh- led by example. And last yeah. time you were on, you spoke about the fact that you uh, had joined a group of women, both Aboriginal and white women, that were mm. having a, a celebration. And there was not clapping sticks. Or they were missing some clapping sticks, and the yeah. and what, they what, were, what the, yes, yeah. it was a deep cer- a deep ceremony. They opened up these um, Aboriginal women opened up the, their sacred ceremonies to white women for the first time, never before. Yeah. And um, I was very blessed to be one of those women. And they ran the Aboriginal women ran out of clapping sticks as more and more Aboriginal women came from different communities. So they started using plastic coke bottles. <laughs> and we we whiteies, you know, so PC, were just horrified. But there's it showed there's um, yeah yeah the, there's no the interface. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You know, yeah. we get we were all a little bit too precious about it. 
Yeah, that, that, that's that's the Western really way. Really empowered to pick up whatever the universe provides you as a tool and use it. I mean, that is true comfort in your skin. Right. That is exactly. true comfort in the right. universe to say, right. "You provide for me. I pick it up. It's useful." I love that. I love that stance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. No judgment. Yeah. Everything is sacred. No, everything no, is sacred. Everything is sacred, and that's what oh. I got from that. Everything's sacred. Oh my God! I was going, "What's oh, plastic? It's awful." And then it was like, "No." beyond there's something beyond that it has a spirit too it has a spirit too or they just oh the spirits created yeah through it Hmm. wow i think some people had their hand up or something was okay let me see what we got here um yeah uh, no one's hands are directly up uh, 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 show this woman a little appreciation well farzad said i have four or five drums but it was my wife who bought us to the only frame drum which i'm learning how to play yeah. Ah, Turn on yeah. your mic and show your face. And, and well, they can yeah. also use a chat room um, as a means of okay. communicating as well. And uh, uh, um, uh, Maria said that uh, just yesterday she became interested in a frame drum. It's so oh. pretty. Such magical presence. Thank you so much. Yeah. I imagine there's a lot of frame drums in the homes of our audience, so you should bring them forward. Yes, a little. Yay! All the families. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Isaac and yeah, David's oh, got gosh. his. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Let me... Oh, look at them all. Just kind because... of spotlight them. Let's have all the well, gems I, I, together. Um, everybody could hit click, click on gallery view rather than, and then you can see everybody's drum. Oh, how fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to roll over my big drum just for the fun. Sure, yeah, I'll show my biggie. Can we spotlight if you can? Kangaroo. Drums, yeah. Come on. Let's go well, take, I can't drum out. do it. You have to do it. What's that? You have to do it. Well, I put everybody on, on um, if everybody goes to... Um, yeah. Turn on your mic if you have a drum and start playing it. Let's celebrate. Oh, look at these beautiful drums. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Why don't we just play a simple rhythm like... Tracy Holton. Don't worry about getting it right. Use your nails on the skin and then scratch right across like this. And now just use the pads of your fingers and feel what a very different statement it is. This to this. You're saying something different Mm -hmm. to whoever you're offering it to. It could be to God, it could be to a sparrow, it could be just to a blessing to yourself. Let's just have a minute where just explore, let the drum play you. Um, I always invite people to let the drum, you know, sing to you before you impose, again, set rhythms on it. So there's all sorts of snaps and tucks. But let's just, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple beat, just boom, 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 boom. And I want you to just explore anything. I'm just going to go, dum, dum. Here we go. And let's offer this up to the whole of the world. And I invite you to let your breath come out. Don't hold the breath, and the breath is a extension of the voice. The voice is an extension of the breath. 
Just let the voice come out too. Yes, beautiful. to just let the sound trail off. Don't be in a hurry. Just let the sound, watch it as the sound trails away. So nice to play. I wish I was in person with you all. <laughs> yes, we need to come all together at Santa Fe. It's so re re funny how all roads lead to Santa Fe that your, your, your door your opening for your life was Santa Fe. We hear the story Absolutely. over and over how yeah. New Mexico and Santa Fe area of the world. Oh. Open My favorite, so many favorite place, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. And of course, we have the wonderful gift of this incredible institute and, uh, and uh, the blessing of the, the sacred land. And so we, uh, we continue the journey. And so we need to have you come back and we'll spend more time together at the institute. And maybe we'll do a, a whole exploratory work with frame drumming and posture work. And, uh, oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Make absolutely. And, and we could drum making yeah. as well. And idea. sound. Yeah. And yeah, I look, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's my, um, what's my, my dream. I would love that. Oh. Yeah. And, this, and we just touched on things tonight, but um, take the frame drum for all of you, men, women, but particularly for the women that, um, you know, didn't know this, you have a traditional rhythmic, pulsing, sacred instrument, not just in your chest, but it's reflected out in, in a physical instrument, the frame drum. And it's a, it's a lineage and the blessing of the ancestors have just come forward, forward, forward and of moving into you. And I invite you to take it up and I'm sorry I haven't been able to speak to all the um, all the comments here and uh, I'm yeah. sure I'll, I'll get tons to of compliments Jane everybody's saying thank you and um, you know it's it's not just about representing the frame drum you you represent spirit you have a very beautiful presence mm -hmm. the way that you approach the world and that presence I think will carry you so far and that um, hopefully inspired a lot of people today with your your gift and what you bring to the world so um, Thank what you a, so much. A, yeah. Thank you so much. I love yeah. you both. I love you all. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Blessings to everybody. Good health. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>